Peace and blessings, power people. It's Tema Aziz Serwa, and I am so excited about having some time in my schedule today to just chat up with you. I was on vacation for a month in October and did a little bit of working, but did a lot more playing. And that was the first time since I launched my business that I actually took off crazy right you work hard so you can play hard so my covenant with myself moving forward is to really really um, give myself that rest I am the most prosperous when I am resting I know it sounds crazy but I think that's because part of my work in this life is to break the generational stronghold in my bloodline of the workaholic and um so many women and men in my family do the most and it's not working in the sense that they don't have the wealth, they don't have the rest, the happiness that people work so hard for, you know? So anyway, I could go on and on about that. The reason I wanted to do this video is I am ecstatic about this book that I took on my trip with me and it has changed my life and I wanted to just do a review and encourage you to add this book to your library if you have not. So let me show it to you. Can y'all see that? Getting the Love You Want by Dr. Harville Hendricks, PhD. And I actually have the 20th anniversary edition thanks to my BFF. I'm going to shout her out, Sarita Whitfield, who makes these amazing bonnets. That's a whole other video. Um, and I also want to shout out Lee Faces because I'm wearing their amazing all-natural um, lip gloss. Purple is my favorite color. And I wanted to put that on. Um, and shout out to Old Town Gemstones in Alexandria, Virginia for this wonderful Mukai Jasper, which is great for emotional balancing, um, just removing of negativity, drama-free stone. Anyway, getting the love you want, a guide for couples. Dr. Hendricks says two profound things in this book that changed my life. The first was that every single human being at a subconscious level because of what he calls the old brain would choose a partner that they feel can be a surrogate parent and heal their childhood wounds okay now listen when I read that I underlined it and I literally wrote next to that paragraph S-H-I-T with four exclamation marks because the light bulb clicked so brightly for me I was like, dang, really? That's what I've been doing? And it was ironic because in my first marriage, I would always say I married my father. And I would joke and say that in my second marriage, I married my mama. And so when I read that, it really resonated with me. And I literally put the book down to meditate on what are those childhood issues and wounds that I am still trying to address in my subconscious mind. And that's what I love about this book because he walks you through tools and activities and different things and insights to really help you peel back those layers. The second thing he says in this book that's closer to the end that was so transformative for me. I literally, while I was in the Virgin Islands, would sit in the ocean every day and pray and call forward and ritual around this truth. The second thing he says is as paradoxical as it may seem the only way to heal those unresolved childhood wounds is through the agape love the unconditional transcendental love of someone else I was like wait a minute because I'm so self-sufficient I'm so independent I am in relationship by choice um, and so, for me, even though I'm in a beautiful covenant relationship, a partnership, I have a wonderful king who, he's everything to me. Um, even though I'm in all of that, I am also super independent. And so, 
when it comes to my wounds, I've held the perspective that the healing was my sole responsibility and that it was my job <laughs> or God's. I mean, I do. I'm deeply spiritual, but I would also say to myself, oh, OK, this is this is my work. I never would have said prior to reading this book that this is part of my partner's work and the responsibility. I never, nor would I have felt the same for his stuff, you know, but, um, cause everybody walks in with something, but it reactivated in me what I've always known from my youth. I used to have a reputation of being a one that was so forgiving, would take anybody back, would love beyond conditions. So I was born that way. I know how to love unconditionally. What changed that was my divorce. Um, going through that experience was the first time in my life that I felt that my love was not enough. And what that made me do was walk around the world with a, a cloak of feeling unsafe. And I began to create conditions because that was the only way I knew at the time to protect myself from having the same experience. And it didn't work. I actually ended up recreating similar experiences because spirit was wise enough to know that if given the same daggone conditions, I will pay attention and do the work to figure out what is really going on and why would I recreate the same dynamic. And so anyway, if you don't have this book, you're missing out. It is an amazing, amazing resource. If you are seeking your love adventure, if you are in one, um, unconditional love, and I've said this before in our seven day campaign and all the things that we do around the message of unconditional love. Love is the cure for it all. And when we give that love and when we show up in a relationship, being that which we seek, not coming in saying, you got to prove to me who you are and that you're worthy of my love. How do you even quantify that? How do you quantify worth for love? If you're thinking on that vibration, it's impossible for you to be loving someone unconditionally. And those conditions catch up with you. You only have those conditions because of your fear and your pain. What's more valuable? Closure, free-flowing, unapologetic, courageous love, or this weak, wimpy, I'm only going to love you if X, Y, and Z is present. Does that mean you don't have high standards? No. But you do need to take a look at what you're using to define the standards that you've set for someone to meet. And if you catch yourself using past experiences, fear-based ideologies, mama told me this, great grandma told me this. Let me see, let me go there for a second. <laughs> Because I am a golden child, and I think that if you're in this time and age of awakening, then you too have been chosen to do ancestral work. If you're here, you're here to do that. Um, some of us will and some of us won't. But let's, listen, the same people that you take advice from about how to love your boo, take a look at their love life. That same great auntie that's telling you stash stuff in your mattress, not that there's anything wrong with having your own financial independence. But take a look and see what kind of level of trust is, is being demonstrated in her love experience. That same mama that's gone through five marriages and all of that, really pay attention to that. And I don't judge, no judgment, no shade. All right, that's the word we're using now, young people, right? <laughs> no judgment, no shade. I just really want you to remove every single excuse you have for why you don't let your unconditional loving energy flow freely. What's the point of showing up in someone else's life with the intention of love if you're not going to let it flow? All right, so again, and I'm not, look, I'm not getting a commission for this. I just love this book so much. <laughs> I should though. No. No. It's not even that deep for me. Seriously, if you don't have this book, Getting the Love You Want by Dr. Harvell Hendricks and his wife, they both actually wrote this book 
together the the revised edition you can get it on amazon.com very affordable and I highly recommend that you do it is an amazing 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 resource um, my king and I use it we're going to go through the activities and work on that um, and peel back the layers even more because the babies are coming and we want to have the kind of household that is so strong in love that you know we are not repeating the same patterns of those that's come before us so I wanted to share that with you it was a life-changing experience and when I came home from my vacation having finished this book the test came for me whether or not I was really going to do what I had declared by faith that I would and I'm happy to say that I passed the test that's how I knew I was different and that's how I knew that I needed to share this resource with you people all right, I love you tremendously. I hope you have a fabulous day and I hope that you let love flow and that you master the arts of loving unconditionally. Peace.